Okay, so let's start as always with this veil chamber picture. I hope you remember it. End of course. So we have here this is sky one, this is sky three, this is sky two, so these are the kernels. Have here the signs plus plus minus, minus minus plus, minus plus plus, minus plus minus. Then you can finish the other ones. Okay, so this corresponds to the sign of the first direction of the of the Japan of X1 along the first direction, the second direction, and the third direction. So we keep with two matrices A well, with this row from C square SL3C. We have these three Lyapunov exponents, we have the splitting E1 plus E2 plus E3. And the first, the chi1 is Lyapunov exponent along the first direction, the chi2 along the second direction, the chi3 is Lyapunov exponent along the third direction. So that's the picture we need. So we know, so we have our alpha from C square to diffeomorphisms of T3. <coughs> so we are going to assume infinity diffeomorphisms. We are going to use that there's infinity. C1 plus epsilon is enough, but you need to modify the technique if you want C1 plus epsilon. If you want to use this technique, you will need CR with probably R equals to 10 or maybe a little bit more than 10, maybe 200, some finite R. Okay? That's a matter. Anyway. So we were able to take a finite in the subgroup gamma of C squared and to build H from T3 to T3, H compose alpha n a plus to rho n compose H for every n in gamma. H was Helder continuous, and the image of H was also Helder continuous. So it's a homeo. And moreover, we had explicit formulas for the H. And you can look at the proof. And you can see a little bit more. So some U of X. The alpha N if we're able to lift it to Rn, so that this was rho nx plus some function phi n of x, which are the periodic functions. And we gave explicit formulas for the h, but let me write them there with some more care. So we can write ux as u1x plus u2x plus u3x know that R3 splits as the sum of three subspaces, so I can take this U1, do this U of X and split it as the sum of three vectors, one on each space. And the same I can do with this phi n. And write it as phi n one of X plus phi n two of X phi n. Okay. And you remember what we did when we show the existence of this H tilde, you can see that if chi i of n is positive, let's write the exact formulas so that I don't make mistake, if this is negative, then i of x is minus sum from k equals to zero to infinity e to the chi i n times k and this phi n i on alpha k times n of both uh, with the second this is positive should be negative here both alpha minus n Okay, so you have 
this number is negative, so this is an exponential com conversion sequence, and this is a bounded function. So this series is conversion by the uh, by the uh, Weierstrass M test, and in the case the chi a i n is positive, then you have a similar formula. Oops, x equals to sum from k equals to zero up to infinity. Oops, there is a factor in front. E to the minus chi i n times the sum from k equals to zero up to infinity of e to the minus chi i n k i n i of alpha k n. Both here. Okay, now you may complain in principle. There are too many indices here. Okay, so the point is when we made the proof, we picked this and not here, and we did all this computation with this n not. Okay, so the n was equals to n not. But now I can do exactly the same with any n. So this expression makes sense for whatever n. So in principle, these ui's will depend on the n, but I proved before that the h was the same independent of the n. Okay? So I have these expressions independent of the n. Okay? So the, these very same functions ui have a lot of way of being written. For each value of n, I can write it in this way. This will be very important, improving smoothness of the guy. Did you can see just from solving this equation, you can just, it's a matter of rewriting this equation, you can see that you have formula u, one prime, from which one is deduced very easily, which says that the ui of x is minus sum from k equal to zero up to n minus one, so it's essentially the same formula, but I'm only adding up to n minus one, so the chi i n, times k by n i on alpha minus k n pose, compose alpha minus n of x plus e to the n chi i n times the u i compose alpha minus n. So we have this so this is, okay, where? What's in the first formula? What's in the bracket of alpha? Here? Yes. Minus k times n. And the, and the one after is just minus n. And yes, it, so these two guys together is minus k plus one times n, I agree. So you could put them together. But I want to make them separate because there is some kind of symmetry here. So you, you, you go k forward and then k backward. And then this is some dirt that I don't want to see. <coughs> so, so this formula is exactly the same as this formula, okay? but only treated n times. And then if I take n to infinity, this goes to the total sum. And this guy is killed because once I know ui exists, this guy is bounded. And I have some exponential conversion term here. So this will be any bounded terms. So you have C0 conversions of these partial sums to the total sum. And there is a counterpart to prime. I will not write it, but it's essentially the same counterpart of what you have here. In the case the chi i n are positive. Because if the chi i n is positive, then here this goes to infinity, so you cannot say much. You want to use the other formula. OK, so we have this formula. And these are crucial formulas to prove smoothness. And let me see if I'm forgetting anything, or that's all I wanted. OK. That's what I needed. So let's try to prove smoothness. Okay. 
If I will make my first attempt, probably I will fail, but uh, then I will introduce more theory and hopefully we will succeed. So I have this explicit formula, say here. Okay, so I, I told you yesterday uh, I happily could move along any place here and the guy will be an Ossoff. Okay, I will have stables and I will have contraction along these tables for whatever n I choose there. So let's see if I take even the very n naught, what, what could I do? <coughs> so I want to have, say, there the, I will try to prove smoothness of the U1. of U1. <coughs> so the U1 here is the first direction. So here the first direction is contracting, so I'm using the first formula. So I want to prove smoothness of this, and if you have a series, if you want to prove smoothness, what you do is you take derivatives. Okay, you take derivative of these terms. If these terms, of the derivative of these terms are summable, then you are in good shape. Okay, we just take the derivative then. Derivative of ui is, will be more specific of how I'm taking derivative soon, but let me just write it down. This is just a number. And then we're taking derivative of phi n i pose alpha minus k n compose alpha minus k. And, okay, here is my first step. So this guy is independent of the k and is smooth. So I can forget about this guy when I'm going to do my computation. Okay, so let me not add it. Very painful to have this guy. So, let's say, it's pretty formal. That's what we have. Have, I have some exponential conversion type guy here, and then I have the derivative of this business. Now, some chain rule is in order, so you can do derivative of phi n i compose alpha minus k n times the derivative of alpha minus k n. So that's what is this guy essentially. If I'm taking first derivative, that's what it is. Okay, this is just a function composed with a homeomorphism, which is what the different morphism, which is onto, so the C0 norm of this is bounded. So this is not a problem. But now I have the norm also of these guys. Okay? Now, these are matrices, and the norm of these matrices are growing to infinity. And indeed, you can be a little bit more specific. I could take a vector here in the unstable direction Okay, if I take n in that cone, if I take the vector in the unstable direction, then this is exponential conversion. I'm in very good shape. But uh, we will see in a second that this is useless. So it's, I, I would have been able to prove it faster before. So the interesting case is when I take vectors along the stable direction. And when I take stable vector in the stable direction, this grows exponentially. This is the hyperbolic condition that will tell me that this will grow exponentially. Now I have a, an exponential decay an exponential grow, and the problem is that uh, most likely this guy will win to that guy. And if you take higher order derivative indeed, what you can do, so you can use just more fancy chain rule formulas, and so the Fadi Bruno formulas, and essentially what you get is a bound like this, but then you will have a power k here. Okay, so that's what you are paying, but it's even worse because you have exponential increasing to the power k, so it's k times this exponentiality against only this term, well, maybe k is not a good quantifier. n is the degree of differentiability, then I have here this guy i n, and I have to kill this guy. So this is not working, so how you fix it? <coughs> how, how you fix it is you fix it in the following way. First of all, 
I won. M? Yes, that's what I want to do for higher smoothness, exactly. But this is not working because the, the, this, the bound I can get here will explode. So I, I, I cannot really control, control this at all. <coughs> so then what should I do? So what I will do is <coughs> I will, first of all, try to fix a little bit this expansion that is appearing here by saying, okay, I will, I don't want really to use the formula I used because this is really bad what is happening there, okay? So what I want to use is the second formula. I want to use this formula. Because if I use this formula, forget about this very bad guy, in principle, because I'm, the n is still down here, so it's not up there, so I'm down there. So this guy is bad now, so I'm using the second formula in the, in the wrong case. But this guy is very nice, because when I do the very same argument I did there, so I will have instead of the minus here, so let me write this down, what will look the second formula. So DUI, second formula will be this the guy I n, so this minus guy here, I forgot the minus sign here, but doesn't matter. And then, and then I have the sum from k equal to zero up to infinity, e to the minus guy I n times k, and then I have derivative by n i derivative compose alpha k n. Now I do the same argument there, and this I can bound by the norm of partial n of phi compose alpha n. Fine, and then the second guy I have to bound is this d alpha k times n. Then I want to see what happens along stable directions. Along unstable will not be a problem. I will tell you later how to do. And I will need to control this bound. And now this is beautiful. Because if I'm taking positive iterates, this has exponential decay. Okay? And this exponential decay essentially will win to this other guy also. Okay? This, is, this one has to be careful. This will not be 100% true, because I don't know how much faster. I don't know this exponential, and I don't know really how much faster this is. So I have to work a little bit more even to, to say that. But at least I, it's a little bit more hopeful than, than that. The big problem is that even if I can take, say, imagine I take higher order the derivative, then the point is I can play a little bit and enhance this. I don't have a function to take derivative to begin with. This is, if chi i n is negative, this doesn't make sense. This is not a function. So what you do, and that's essentially the idea of Fisher, Kalinin, and Spatier, is not a function, it's true, but it's a distribution. So as a distribution, it makes sense, one has to prove it. And then if it is a distribution, you can take the Schwarz distribution, you can take derivative of a distribution. And if you eventually show that taking enough derivative, you get a nice function, then you can say something. So that's the claim. That's the lemma. <coughs> lemma one. U1 <coughs> take n to be chosen carefully. So C. C is this cone. To be chosen. 
expression carefully. Write it. Um, so this is formula two. And then formula two defines ui of x i i e for any function psi p the integral of ui times psi is equal to the sum from k equal to zero up to infinity of e to the minus chi i n, there is an e to the minus i chi n also here, there is a k here, integral of pi n i composed alpha n, alpha k n times psi. I did with more space here. I of x times psi x equals to be Okay, so this is Yes, for some special to be chosen carefully. I, I didn't tell you exactly what does it mean. I will tell you later. I don't have even a function to, the, to differentiate. Yes, that's why I don't have. I could take formal derivative of this. I could do that, and I will have a series. But even if I do that, which is what is written there, Still not obvious that this exponential contraction here will win to this exponential expansion there. It is not. It is, no, it is not. It is not. So it, this indeed, it, this will not win to that because yes. Absolutely. You have, to, you have to make very careful things. But even if you were in the best of the cases, the only thing you may hope is that this number is exactly the same as this number. So in the best of the cases, you will have balance. So this will not explode, but it will not go to zero. Okay? It will be used. It will be used, yes, to control. To, to st I still need to control this. So the, the point is that what I can show essentially here is that this guy doesn't grow exponentially. So does grow exponentially, but not too exponentially. So super exponential. It at most grows only exponential with some explicit bounds on the exponential I will have. Okay. Now this will be enough. First of all, to get. This statement and the next statement, which is much stronger, because this statement I can get it without this discussion. But the next statement I need this discussion to to get it. Okay? But you only discuss things in the distributional sense. Okay? So if I need to modify a little bit all my statements here to to make it work, but. The, 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 I think that's, that's where everything comes from. So the way you realize that this is the right thing to do is by looking at this term. So if you want to get convergence in the distributional sense of this series, you need to know something about what you are summing. Now what is this? Let me just translate this in a very crude way. Okay, so your, say your alpha 
n of x, so your alpha n is just a function f, your phi n i is just a function phi, which is a C infinity function, your psi is also a C infinity function, so what is this? Is the integral of phi composed with fk times psi, and let's say instead of dx I put a d mu. Okay, now maybe you start realizing what is this term if I, top of this, take out the integral of phi times the integral of psi. So this is the decay of correlations for these two functions. And I may be very lucky and have that this is less than e sum tau times k minus tau times k is norm of phi, Helder norm of psi. Okay? I may be lucky enough to have exponential decay of correlation for Helder continuous function. And also systems used to have that. Okay, so I only need to do it with respect to the right measure and constants, of course, will not kill my problems up there. So I will not have problems with the constants. Okay, so that's why you hope to have some conversions. Okay, and, and, and observe that when you want to say that this happens in the distributional sense, it means that I need to have conversions of this series, but I need to have bound on the CR norm of psi, okay, for some R. And here I'm getting respect to the Helder norm, so it's not bad. It's a distribution, but it's not even of very high level. Let's state, let's discuss a li little bit this issue. There exists a measure mu equals to some cell function eta x x where eta is in infinity and mu is alpha n invariant. have an absolutely continuous invariant measure for this. Moreover, H star mu is hard measure. Uh, I'm sorry. Uh, measures go from push back the measures. You don't pull them forward or you pull them back. Um, you define a measure there, so it's also so correct. Okay, it's hard measure on this. <coughs> so when you take the H, which maps on your T3 with the rho action, and you have here the 3 with your alpha action, you take the measure mu here, and it's sent into the most natural invariant measure there, which is hard measure. This is a non-trivial statement. It's a consequence, essentially, of Lipschitz theorem or katok kononenko or more so. In, in, in the best form is a consequence of katok schwarzier But it's not that hard to prove in this context. <coughs> so you have to play some cohomological equations. So it's, it's, it's not really that hard in this context. So that's the first thing to do. So I have this measure, this dx, and I have this eta, which is fixed. So this statement will tell me that it's not harm if I put the measure mu here instead of this measure dx when I'm discussing this harmonic analysis. Okay, that's the first statement. Second statement. So it's a theorem by Gorodnik and Spatier but in this uh, in this framework has an understandable proof in the general framework uh, the proof well 
of course, there are at least two persons that can understand and more has had a referee, and one can understand it, but use heavy machinery. Okay, so you use green tau division results, but in this setting of the torus, it's really something, it's some Fourier business, which is quite understandable. Uh, so it says the following, which is this decay of correlation. So, of course, you would say it's decay of correlation for a loss of maps, so this is a very old subject, so and let me just be careful on the statement. So given theta, which is the Hölder exponent, there exists tau positive. The row action is given here. So this guy depends on the row action, but only on the row action. <coughs> Did you less than that, but doesn't matter now. Uh, such that if phi is in C theta, psi is also in C theta, and uh, that's it. Then the integral of phi composed alpha n times psi x, uh, alpha not rho, so it's for the linear action. This is minus the integral of phi dx times the integral of psi dx is smaller than or equal to some constant. Yeah, there is a constant here. C positive. E to the minus tau norm of n times, now I need epsilon more space, norm of phi, C theta, norm of psi. So the decay is uniform for all the elements of the action. So that's the key business. And since the conjugacy H is holder continuous, I can take this decay of correlation exactly the very same with the same exponent tau there, maybe a modified theta here, to decay for the alpha action. And this is exactly what I needed here. This is exactly what I need there. And as I told, of course there appear the integral of phi and the integral of psi, but this is not really a big deal. So this is not a problem. So this decay, when you change the alpha instead of the rho, is exactly the proof of this lemma. Yes. And I guess I get the conversions. So assume, so here, here you, you, you have to do the following thing. So when, when you go to the proof, assume first the integral of psi is 0. Uh, and then this thing here is exactly the same as this thing here. So this guy decays exponentially, but also with bounds of the norm of psi c theta. So I gained, indeed, let me just put it here. What I know is that ui, well, it was continued to begin with. So what I'm going to write here is useless, but it's important. This is in theta star. <laughs> That's the proof that this guy is in theta star. Of course, the fact that ui is in theta star is, is vacuous. So I know that ui is Hölder, and a Hölder will be in its dual c theta. This is not fun. What is important here is that this formula holds in the distributional sense. Okay? And indeed, rather than using exactly this sum, you can use this formula here and get it even faster. But let me not enter into this. Now comes the second lemma, which is even more important. Use this heavily. So the key point here is being able to use the wrong formula, okay? So that's, that's the, 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 the key issue. <coughs> oh, I, yeah, maybe, yeah, I'm sorry. I, I, I should say something more, probably that's why he's, he's complaining there. 
uh, yes, I, I, I'm sorry, yes. So here I have some clear bound tau. This is more than tau. I have tau mod of n k, this, this decay. Okay? Now I need to win to this guy here, which is positive. Okay? So that's this. Be chosen carefully. So the proof of lemma one is just the following. There exists n, indeed, for every eta uh, positive, there exists n C such that I want two statements. One is chi i n is negative. That's just because the guy belongs here. But it's larger than it minus eta. Uh, that's times n. And this is just essentially irrationality of this guy. That's one thing. And then I will need other more thing, but let me skip until the next step where I need to prove the next lemma. But once I have this, then I can choose really this n so that this is in absolute value much smaller than the tau I'm winning, and the tau is fixed independent of the n. A second lemma. <coughs> For any n <coughs> positive, the n derivative along the s direction of ui this is n derivative along ws direction, es direction, belongs to C theta star. So there exists theta. Okay, so I'm taking n order derivative, but only for vectors along the stable direction for this guy I have. Okay, and I know they are all always in the same distribution space of the same degree, C theta. <coughs> so it's, this that happened here is not only true just for the UI, which was useless, it's also true for the derivative, and I don't need to move the theta. Yeah, and that, that's, that's the crucial business, because, of course, from here you will get that dn ui is in C n plus theta star. So this is almost a triviality. Okay? But you, you can do it without modifying the theta. <coughs> the proof is a little bit more complicated, and I just realized I have only five minutes. So, but follows exactly the same spirit here. Okay? And there is one very important step that I'm not put in here, but it's, it's, <coughs> it's what I said, so it's this guy now, since I'm getting very, very to the boundary of my n, of, of, my, of my c, this guy now is not anymore exponentially contracting. Well, it's exponentially contracting, but I don't have good control on how fast it is. But at least the, the, I can play this eta business and create some control. So I, I have a counterpart of this eta for the nonlinear action also, which comes in the same flavor as what we did yesterday when we showed that all the elements here were an awesome. Okay, so once you know that for every measure the Lyapunov exponent has this bound, then it's true uniformly. And then you play exactly the same game here, and for all Lyapunov exponents, you will have a bound like this, and then you have this type of bound uniformly for the nonlinear, just by playing the Lyapunov exponent. 
So you need this type of bound to play this. Let me not enter into this because if not, I will need today, tomorrow, and another week. Just to prove lemma two, but that's the, the, the philosophy of lemma two is essentially this lemma one plus some interpolation techniques, okay? Where you bound what you can bound in C theta star and then the rest you allow to go to C n plus theta star and then you do the rest. Okay, so that's what you get. The next lemma <coughs> is putting this plus this together, so it says that if action W from T3 R is C theta, so it's a Helder continuous function, and the partial derivative of order S of these W functions are in C theta star for every n. So exactly what I'm having here. So this partial derivative makes sense in distributional sense and as distributions belong there, then there exists alpha positive, which is a little bit smaller than theta. It can be taken essentially as close to theta as you wish, but it's a little bit small, uh, such that this dnsw belongs to C alpha. These partial derivatives is, are actually functions and are Helder functions. So this is just an interpolation technique. So it's, it's a very standard fact in harmonic analysis that if you have a function which you bound the CR norm and you bound the CL norm, you can bound all norms in between. Okay? And <coughs> that's what you are doing here. Okay, so you, you have that the very high derivatives are bounded here, so this has some implication on how this, this W norm, and I, then I can bound all the other guys in between. So this interpolation plus overlap embedding is just some very basic harmonic analysis. In so it's the only subtlety that you have to work a little bit harder is that everything here is subordinated to the stable direction, not to the total space, so then you have to do some harmonic analysis subordinated to the stable direction, but that's doable, that, that's not really, uh, it's not even painful, it's, it's, it's nice. <coughs> okay, good, so I have now that my function ui is differentiable along the stable direction. Now what happens along the unstable direction? Let's analyze UI along the unstable direction. So I have, the same way I split the UI, I could split the H tilde as H tilde 1 plus H tilde 2 plus H tilde 3. Okay? And I know that H will take the stable manifold of N naught of a point X into the stable manifold of the linear guy, which will be H of X plus the stable space of a node, which is nothing but H of X, well, there is still does here everywhere, plus the stable space, which is the E1 plus the E2 direction. So we'll take this stable manifold onto this translated space. Now, what is this translated space? So here I have, say, the E1, E2, E3. So I have me my H tilde X, and I have this, this guy. Now I have the unstable manifold. Correctly. I have my unstable manifold of this point X, so these are curves, and this is just a plane. 
Now, this plane is mapped into this plane. This line is mapped into this line through the point X. So it should be into this line. Okay, now this line, by definition, so you have the counterpart here, so H tilde of the unstable manifold N naught of X is H tilde X plus the third space, which is the unstable manifold for this N naught. So this, the fact that the image of this manifold is this line means that this first coordinate is not moving and this second coordinate is not moving. Okay, so what I get is that H1 tilde restricted to the unstable manifold of this point X is constant. It has to be constant. It cannot move. It's a constant function. It's constant H1 of X. Okay, the only variable that, that, that moves is the third Guy. So the first is constant, the second is constant, the third is moving. Well, the constant function is smooth. Okay? Now, U1 is H tilde minus the projection of the first coordinate. Projection is smooth, so U1 is smooth as well, along the unstable. And then there is, to finish, a theorem of Schurme. H1 minus the projection on the first coordinate, so H, because H tilde is X plus U, so H tilde 1 is projection on the first coordinate plus U1. Okay, so it's the natural projection from R3 into this E1 coordinate. So if this is constant and this is, uh, if this is constant and this is smooth, this is smooth. It's just this statement. So Schurne theorem says that if W uh, from T3 into R is Helder, in this he only needs continuous, but let me formulate the way I want to use it, is have D N S W in C alpha and D N U W in C alpha for every oops it fly for every n, then W is infinity function. Okay, so he has much more statement like that, but that's. So you get U1 is, is smooth. Okay, then we have to go to U2 and to U3. Now let me just comment one very important thing. We needed this eta here, and to get this eta, it means that I have to take the n very close to indeed this line where the chi one is very close to zero. I right? needed to be able to take this, this point here. Okay? And that's why I was able to handle the E1 direction. I could handle the E2 direction by taking a guy here, but I cannot handle the E3 direction. Because to handle the E3 direction, I need to make this chi three of n very close to zero. So to handle the third direction, I need to jump this wall and approach here. But to do that, I will need to know that the guys here are an awesome. And that's the next thing to do. Cross the wall and get an awesome guy there, and once I get an awesome guy there, then I'm done. Okay, so that's, that's what we are going to do tomorrow.